Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to explain 80386 microprocessor architecture. So let's learn log diagram of 80386. 80386 is 32-bit microprocessor. There are two versions of 80386. The one is 80386DX and other is 80386SX. DX stands for double execution and SX stands for single execution. In our discussion, we are going to uh, learn 80386 DX that is for double execution. Now 80386 is packed in 132 pin ceramic pin grid array that is abbreviated as PGA. What is meaning of pin grid array? It is a type of integrated circuit that means it, it is an IC like 8086 is. In PGA, the package is square or rectangular. That means shape of this 80386 uh, like uh, or in PGA, it can be rectangular or square. Here it is shown square. And pins are arranged in rectangular array on underside of the package. And they are on all four sides of package. 80386 is 32-bit. It has 32-bit address bus and 32-bit data bus. That means data bus size is 32-bit and address bus size is also 32-bit. And since there is 32-bit address, so it can address two raised to power 32 memory locations. That means it can address 4 GB of memory. Now, this is a block diagram of 80386 microprocessor. It is divided into different blocks. Let's see what these blocks are. So there are five functional units. The first is bus interface unit. So this is your bus interface unit. Next is code prefetch unit. So second uh, unit is code prefetch unit. After that comes instruction decode unit. So there it is, instruction decode unit. Then there is execution unit. This is execution unit. And fifth is memory management unit. So this is memory management unit. So architecture is divided into five functional units. And let's learn all the units one by one in detail. So let's start with bus interface unit. Now what bus interface unit does? The bus interface unit is also available in 8086. So bus interface unit connects 80386 with memory and input output device. So this is 80386 and if we want to connect memory or input output devices, memory or input output device to 80386, then bus interface unit is used to connect this. Bus interface unit holds 32-bit bidirectional data bus as well as 32-bit address bus. So what bus interface unit holds there is 32-bit unidirectional address bus, so it is unidirectional, and 32-bit bidirectional data bus. So this blue is address bus, which is unidirectional, and yellow is data bus, that is bidirectional. Now, what is the function of bus interface unit? Now, what bus interface unit does during data instruction read-write operation? That means if 886 wants to read data or write data or read instruction or write instruction into memory or input output device, then what is the function of bus interface unit? Bus interface unit gen generates signals for activating data and address bus in order to fetch data from desired address. That means whenever 80386 wants to fetch data or instruction from memory or input output device, it first it generates control signal. And after that, what bus interface unit does? It sends 32-bit address if it wants to fetch data from memory. And then it will fetch data from memory. 80386 can also transfer data into memory because data flows in by direction or in two directions. Now, 80386 also sends 32-bit address to input output device whenever it wants to read data from input output device or write data into input output device. So this data flows in both direction. That means from and to 80386. Next is code prefetch unit. 
that is prefetch that prefetches instruction so here you can see in block diagram there is code prefetch unit this what is this this is a bigger version the same is shown in a bigger view what code prefetch unit does whenever system generates a need for instruction that means whenever this 8086 wants instruction or whenever it wants to execute some instruction then code prefetch unit this unit will fetches the instructions that are stored in the memory so this is a memory which is connected to prefetch so this memory holds instructions so what this prefetch does it will fetches the instructions stored in the memory what is prefetch prefetch size is 16 byte code queue it is 16 byte code queue that means it can fetch 16 instruction bytes and keep it in the queue in 8086 we had already learned there is a 6 byte instruction queue so it can fit 6 byte and keep it in the queue similarly here the size of queue is 16 byte so 80386 prefetch can fetch 16 instruction bytes and keep it in the queue this unit fetches one double word that means 32 bits in single access 32 bits means it can fetch four bytes in one bus cycle so what prefetch can do it can fetch it need not to fetch one byte one byte one byte but it can fetch all 32 bits that means uh, or double word or you can say four bytes in single fetch operation and then it can store in the queue again it can fetch four more and keep it in the queue then again it can fetch four more and keep it in the queue now what happens next so in such case that means it is fetching four instruction bytes at a time it is not necessary that each time only one single instruction will be fetched it is fetching four bytes of different it can fetch four bytes of different instructions so it is not necessary that it will fetch single instruction at a time the fetch instruction can be a part of two different instruction that means these three bytes can be a part of one instruction and this a byte can be a part of some other instruction so this is possible because it is fetching four bytes at a time now next next is instruction decode unit so you can see here this is code prefetch unit and code prefetch unit is connected to instruction decode unit so what prefetch had done prefetch had already fetched the instructions from the memory and it had already kept it in the queue so this is instruction byte 4 there will be instruction uh, byte 5 and 6 and so on up to 50 60 okay so what happens this unit decodes the instruction stored in the prefetch queue so what is the function of decode unit this is instruction decode unit its function is to decode the instructions fetched by prefetch the instruction decode unit takes instruction byte from the code prefetch queue and translate them into micro code so what this instruction uh, decoder does it will fetch the instruction byte from the prefetch and it will translate into micro code that means it will decode that instruction and then decoded instruction below this you can see below the instruction decoder there is decode instruction queue so since there is decode instruction queue after decoding it will transfer this decoded instruction in the decode instruction queue after that it will take next instruction then it will uh, translate into micro code that means again then it will decode instruction uh, to instruction by to our second instruction and then again it will transfer into uh, decode instruction queue decode instruction queue operates on first in first out basis so first we have transferred instruction by one so after this what happens the decoded instruction are then stored in the instruction queue so it, these decoded instructions are already stored in the instruction queue and they are passed to the control section now they are passed to the control section for deriving the necessary control signal so decoder have decoded the instruction decoding means it will find out the meaning of that instruction suppose it is add x comma bx that means uh, the microprocessor is supposed to add uh, two numbers that are saved into two different registers so it has to read the data from that register and then generate necessary control signal for that addition 
or you can say address calculation. So who does that? So control ROM will generate necessary control signal according to this decoded instruction byte. So this portion is nothing but it is a part of execution unit. Now next you can see here execution unit. The execution unit consists of decode and sequency control ROM. So control ROM generates signal and different, the, again there are different parts in execution unit. These instructions are provided to the execution unit in order to execute the instruction. So why uh, we transfer the instruction or why transfer the instruction to execution unit for execution of instruction. The control unit contains microcode. So it uh, holds the decoded instruction and it also holds parallel hardware for multiply divide effective address calculation. So it has a different uh, parts that is there is separate hardware for fast multiplication and division. There is a barrel shifter. There is a separate hardware for effective address calculation. Suppose the particular instruction wants to add a number, one number is in register and other is, uh, number is in memory. That means data is in memory. So it has to calculate the memory address and then fetch that data. So for that, it needs to uh, calculate the address and for that, there is a separate hardware in execution unit. So what execution unit holds? So it has 32-bit ALU. That means there is 32-bit arithmetic and logical unit. So this 32-bit arithmetic and logical unit performs all 32-bit uh, arithmetic and logical operations. So it is for operations of arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiply, division, and logical operations, logical operations like add or XOR, etc. So, uh, and it operates on 32 bit of data. So there is 32 bit arithmetic and logical unit that performs operation over 32 bit of data in one cycle. Also, it consists of eight general purpose registers. So there are eight general purpose registers. So you can see here, there are eight general purpose registers. So if you can see, here you can, there are general purpose registers like AX, DX, CX, and DX. So you can use them as 8-bit register. If you want to use them uh, uh, as 8-bit register, you can use AL, AH, DL, DH, BH, BL like that. If you want to use them as 16-bit registers, then use, the, use them as by abbreviation like AX, DX, CX, and DX. And if you want to use them as 32-bit registers, then you have to abbreviate them like EAX. E stands for extended AX and so on. So there are eight general purpose registers. Then there are eight special purpose registers. So you can see here there are eight special purpose register, code segment, stack segment, and different kind of data segment. And there is status and instruction registers. These are used for data handling and calculation of offset addresses. So all these registers are used for data handling. That means storing temporary data or for calculation of offset registers. So these uh, special purpose registers are used for calculation of uh, physical address. Now there is memory management unit. The memory management unit of 80386 is divided again into two parts that is segmentation unit and paging unit. Now let's see what is segmentation unit. So segmentation unit offers protection mechanism in order to protect code and data present in the memory from application program. So what segmentation unit does? It provides protection mechanism. For which it gives protection, it gives, it protects either code or data stored in the memory. Here I have shown you a data memory in which data bytes are stored. So uh, there will be always uh, also a code memory in which we store program. So this uh, provides protection mechanism for that instruction stored or program stored or data stored. Now it gives four level protection to data or code present in the memory. So there are four levels of protection. What are the four levels? So every information in the memory is assigned a privilege level. That means every information stored in the memory is assigned one privilege level. The privilege level varies from PL0 to PL3. 
So you can see here, these are three uh, data bytes uh, to which PL0 is assigned, that means privilege level zero. So byte four has privilege level one, like byte three has PL3, byte two PL1 and byte one PL2. So what is the meaning of this privilege level zero? So PL0 holds the highest priority and PL3 holds the lowest priority. Now, what is the meaning of this? Suppose there is another memory that is code memory or program memory, wherein application programs are stored. Suppose these are, this is one program and this is another program. This program consists of suppose only two instructions or two bytes and this program consists of four bytes, uh, for example. Now, these programs are also assigned the privilege level. So here this is assigned privilege level zero and here this program is assigned with privilege level two. Now, if this application program wants to access data from data memory, it can access all the data having privilege level zero to three because this program has the highest priority of privilege level. But this is program, another program with PL that means its privilege level is little lower. So this program can access the data with PL2 and PL3, but it cannot access PL1 or PL0 because their privilege level is higher than the program's privilege level. In short, I will show you if the program has privilege level zero, that means highest priority, so it can access the data with privilege level zero, PL1, PL2, and PL3. If program has privilege level one, then it can access data with PL1, PL2, and PL3. If it has uh, privilege level two, PL2, say, then it can access PL2 and PL3. And if program has privilege level three, it can access data only with privilege level so this is how it works now next unit is paging unit paging is a function of memory management where a computer store and retrieve data from devices secondary storage to primary storage so what is paging paging is a function of memory management what it does in this function the computer will store and retrieve data from device secondary storage to primary storage so secondary storage is a uh, storage where data of computer is kept for a longer duration of time and primary storage we uh, store the data for shorter period of time. So what paging unit does? Paging unit operates only in protected mode. What is protected mode of 80386? 80386 protected is operating in protected mode means it operates like itself because 80386 can be used as 8086 also. But 80386, when we use it as 80386, it is said that it is operating in protected mode and in that mode only this paging unit will operate or will be functional. It changes linear address into physical address. We know that whenever, we, uh, whenever 80386 has to page data from the memory, it has to calculate physical address and it, this unit will perform that operation. Basically, it changes overall task map into pages. That means it will divide the memory into different parts or different pages and size of each page is four kilobytes. The paging unit supports multitasking. So because of the paging, multitasking is possible. So it was all about the architecture of 80386. I hope you understood the concept behind it and understood the block uh, function. Still, if you have any doubt, you can always ask in the comment section. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.